So recently I've noticed there were two other channels on YouTube besides mine that were commenting on the Joni Lamb, Doug Weiss saga. And so one channel took down all their content and the other channel is still there and still has the content. Also, I'm not sure if it was Joni Lamb or who, who it is at Daystar that doesn't have anything else to do besides go to YouTube and look for videos that are critical of Joni Lamb and Daystar and her relationship with Doug Weiss. They, I, I guess they actually pay people to peruse YouTube. Kind of a bullying tactic, really. Why do you want to silence your critic? Maybe you could learn something through constructive criticism. Even the Bible has scriptures that port this. Let's look at some of those. Proverbs 27, 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. It seems like the people at Daystar have, have uh, these friends that, well, they call friends, but they could be enemies because they flatter for gain. They flatter because they want airtime on Daystar. They flatter because they want to have Joni Lamb's friendship, and they don't tell her the truth. We'll look at some scriptures here about rebuking. Proverbs 27, 5, open rebuke is better than secret love. 1 Timothy 5.20, them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear. Titus 2.15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Second Timothy three sixteen to seventeen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for repro reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So maybe maybe uh, the people at Daystar can learn something from their critics and not try to silence people unjustly. For instance, on my channel, they filed a copyright claim, which my content is protected by the fair use law, and they know that, but they, they uh, file these copyright strikes with YouTube, and YouTube doesn't get in the middle of it. They just automatically remove the video, and then you have to counter the claim and you have to go through this big long process. So even if you're, even if there is no copyright infringement, if somebody complains that there is, they take it down. But the fair use law allows you to use small portions of people's copyright material for criticism, for education, and those type of things. So. They don't have a leg to stand on, really. It's just a form of intimidation and bullying. I'm not using their material or their video clips to make money. I'm not using it for anything else except for criticism and for education to educate people about what's going on. These, these uh, video clips that I used are in the public in the, in public domain they're they're already out there so <laughs> it's not like i'm producing a documentary for television or i'm uh, trying to make money off of the uh, daystore name or of off of joni lamb's name i don't care about that my whole purpose in making the videos that I do, especially about televangelists, is because I want to make Christian television Christian again and to stop all the scamming and the pyramid schemes and everything else that's going on with these channels that bring a reproach to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to be making a video. Maybe I'll, I'll try to get it up today about 
I want to make Christian television Christian again. And these people know what they're doing. They, they, they've been around and uh, they know what works. They know that miracle selling, they can promise people miracles if they send them money and they know it works and that's how they build their networks. And it's wrong to do that. It's, it, it's despicable really to take somebody's pain and sorrow and to enrich yourself that way when God's gifts are freely given. Here is a quick definition of the fair use legal doctrine from the U.S. Copyright Office. Fair use is a legal doctrine that promotes freedom of expression by permitting the unlicensed use of copyright protected materials in certain works. And that's what I do in my videos, is I use the small amount of video clips for criticism, education, news reporting, which is legal. And it's not honest. It's not using Christian integrity to file false copyright claims against people just because you want their content taken down because it's, it might be critical. Let's look at the definitions of rebuke because many people say, well, you can't judge and you can't criticize, but yes, you can because it, you can go to any concordance and I recommend using the King James. There are many instances of rebuking and what the word rebuke means is to express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. That's what it means. So it's biblical to do so. And some other meanings of the word rebuke are admonish, scold, reprove, which we saw that definition in the scriptures that I read before. Also, we have people saying, well, you know, you can't judge, but yes, there are scriptures about judging. We have to be able to judge what's true and what's false, especially when it applies to scripture. And if you look at 1 Corinthians 5, 12, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do ye not judge them that are within? We have to be able to discern be between right and wrong and good and evil, especially in the days that we're living in. There's so much error out there. The devil has used people that call themselves Christians to deceive many people into not questioning anything that is wrong. The only thing that we can stand on in these end times and we can know for sure is God's word. So we're all responsible for knowing it. And if we see something that can shipwreck someone's faith or, or cause damage to the cause of Jesus Christ, we need to expose it. And, and in the end, you hope that the people that you're exposing will come to repentance and see the error of their ways and not get angry and try to, to do something with revenge against the person that's speaking out to bring attention to the error. It's not, my motivation is not to hurt anyone, but to bring light to the things that can cause people to stumble and also to affect people that might be considering following Jesus Christ. And then they look at, they look at these television preachers and they say, well, I don't want any of that. Of course, that's not Jesus. Jesus is not that way, the way he's being portrayed by many of these people. We need to be conscious of what's going on. Do what we can to bring reformation to the church. And I leave you with this. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? That means a little false doctrine. A little false doctrine leaveneth the whole lump. Verse 8. Therefore, 
let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. And that's filing false copyright claims against YouTubers, one of the things. But with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I write unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with covetous, or extortioners. And an extortion is when these people tell you to give a thousand dollars to get miracles from God. That's extortion. And the Bible says not to keep company with extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company of any, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? For them that are without God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Yeah, God judges those that are outside of the church. We're to judge those that are inside of the church. And that's the word. And you can't argue with that. So we pray and be honest with God's people and show them the goodness of God, how good God is, that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God bless you, and thanks for listening.